you don't have to be an archaeologist to make a spectacular discovery about the past, but it helps. The reality is that anyone can make an incredible archaeological discovery, but you'll probably need the help of a professional archaeologist to understand it fully. Such discoveries can be made at any time, and they can happen anywhere in the world. This video is full of fantastic examples of archaeology at its best. Don Francisco Pizarro is an enormously controversial historical figure. He was a Spanish conquistador and was chiefly responsible for the conquest of Peru. Conquistadors are rarely welcomed or loved by the people they conquer, so the Peruvian capital of Lima is probably the last place you'd expect Pizarro's remains to be. Nevertheless, they're here, contained inside an incredibly elaborate sarcophagus of marble, glass, and bronze that was purpose-built for him after he passed away on June 26, 1541. The fact that he personally founded Lima might have something to do with the city's willingness to honor him. His reign as the city's first governor came to an abrupt end when he was assassinated by followers of Diego de Almagro, another conquistador who had different opinions about how Peru should be run. His bones were then buried behind the cathedral and then moved and reburied several times in the years that followed as the cathedral grew. That led to the wrong body being entombed from around 1661 to 1977, when tests were performed. The bones in the tomb were a mishmash of bones taken from several unknown individuals. Pizarro's bones were actually still in a vault under the cathedral. The mistake has since been corrected. Considering how common chain mail was a few centuries ago, it's amazing how rare it's become today. That's why it was such a huge surprise when this remarkable 800-year-old example of a chainmail vest was handed in to the Knights and Conquest Heritage Center by a member of the public in County Longford, Ireland in August 2021. This is a full coat of chainmail and should be referred to as a hauberk. Staff inside the Heritage Center couldn't believe their eyes or their ears when the member of the public told them that they'd found the priceless artifact in the back of his garden shed. If we presume the anonymous donor of the item was telling the truth, he found the chain mail while working on his land with a digger a few years ago and stuck it in his shed because he didn't know what else to do with it. It apparently never crossed his mind that it might be valuable or historically significant. As well as the hauberk, they also found a dagger that presumably also belonged to the hauberk's owner. The Heritage Center forwarded the artifacts on to the National Museum of Ireland, where the staff were just as shocked as their Heritage Center counterparts. They later confirmed that it dates back to the arrival of the Normans in 1172. How it ended up in a drain is unknown. Here's another amazing discovery from a member of the public working on their land. It's a few precious relics from the Unaticha culture, which were found by a Polish farmer in August 2021. The discovery took place in Poland's Sulison County. The Unaticze were a Bronze Age people and are sometimes also known as the Onjatits. They emerged about 4,300 years ago and lasted for roughly 500 years before disappearing from history. Their former territories are distributed across Poland, Slovakia, Czechia, and Germany and they can be identified by the quality and uniqueness of their metal tools. This particular tool set is a perfect example of what we mean by that. We have a hatchet, a chisel, three scepters, and three bronze daggers, all of which were made in a style that you won't see anywhere else. The Unatice culture is a historical anomaly, because although they made huge quantities of weapons, they didn't have a reputation for being conquerors or warriors. It's been theorized that their weapons were meant more as status symbols for their owners than as battlefield weapons. The theory hasn't been proven, but it's an intriguing possibility. The peat bogs of rural Ireland keep their secrets. Anything that falls into them is likely to stay there for thousands of years, whether that's an animal, an object, or even a human being. There have been several peat bog bodies recovered from Irish bogs in the past, but this find isn't one of them. Instead, it's a large and mysterious wooden idol that was found in Gornacrana, Roscommon, in August 2021. 
The idol is eight feet tall and vaguely human-shaped, although not so much you'd say it was a representation of a living human. Finding wooden idols in bogs isn't totally unheard of in Ireland, but never before has one of such size been discovered. Scientists have been able to take samples of the idol for testing, and from those tests, they can tell us that this is a relic of the Ice Age. They think it's about 1,600 years old. When the idol was pulled from the bog, it dragged a collection of weaponry, animal bones, human remains, and golden jewelry and ornaments along with it. Archaeologists think that all of these things were thrown into the bog together, which would make this a votive offering of some kind. The symbolic meaning of the idol remains unknown. During the peak of the Roman army's powers, we imagine that being attacked by its soldiers was a bad enough experience without being psychologically tormented at the same time. On the other hand, psychological warfare might have been one of the reasons the Romans were so successful. They didn't only want to defeat you physically, they also wanted to break you mentally. To do so, they used unconventional weapons like this. Their whistling sling stones, designed to make noise as they sped through the air towards you some 1,800 years ago. The most recently discovered set of whistling stones was found in Lockerbie, Scotland in August 2021. The tiny holes drilled in each of the stones served a dual purpose. They would firstly make injuries worse because of their compressive effect on impact, and they also made a dreadful noise as thousands of them whistled through the air at the same time. The noise is said to have terrified the native Scottish tribes when they faced the Romans on the battlefield. It's known that there was an enormous battle between the Scots and the Romans on nearby Burnswark Hill during the second century. These stones are almost certainly a leftover from that battle. When this rare Langsax fighting blade was found in Poland's Rudecki Landscape Park in August 2021, archaeologists were sure it was ancient. What they were less sure of was whether or not the blade had Viking origins, and the debate over that question is still going on. Although historians refer to blades like these as swords, it would probably be more accurate to refer to them as long knives. Although the people who found it are archaeologists, they weren't looking for it when they made the discovery. Instead, they were trying to pinpoint the location of a battlefield from the Polish-Pomeranian War of 1091. The blade is not thought to be connected to that battle. Instead, it appears to be a relic of the 8th century. The discovery is made all the more curious by the lack of anything else of archaeological significance in the surrounding area. The blade appears to be all on its own, which suggests it may have been dropped by accident. That would presumably have been a regrettable loss for its owner, who used it in battle. The small bend on the tip of the blade is a telltale sign that the weapon had seen action. Other than that, though, it's remarkably undamaged. The Bayou Tapestry is considered one of the most important archaeological treasures in the United Kingdom. It's also not a tapestry. Tapestries are woven on a loom. This enormous artifact was embroidered by hand with colored thread. Nevertheless, it's the most complete first-hand record the country has of the pivotal Battle of Hastings in 1066. The entire piece is more than 200 feet long, even without its final piece, which has been missing for centuries. It contains 50 individual scenes, each of which shows the battle at a different stage. Some of the scenes also appear to contain elements of Aesop's fables for unknown reasons. This is actually one of the world's oldest propaganda documents. It was commissioned by the victorious Normans after the battle as a retrospective means of justifying their invasion of England. The idea that King Harold died on the battlefield with an arrow through his eye comes directly from the images on the tapestry. The claim made by the artifact is that Harold promised to back William the Conqueror's claim to the English throne, and then went back on his word when Harold himself became king. Nobody will ever know whether any such promise was made. Martin Jackson is a man who knows a thing or two about antiques. He's an ambulance driver by trade, but he often attends auctions and yard sales on the lookout for bargains. In 2014, 
he struck gold. He found this small hammer at the back of a box of old tools and agreed to buy it from the seller at the knockdown price of three pounds. He had a feeling that it was old and therefore possibly valuable, but he had no idea of the true nature of the artifact he'd just bought until he got home. After removing the electrical tape that was wrapped around the hammer's handle, he saw a silver band covered in delicately etched hieroglyphics. That was enough for him to consult with the National History Museum in London, which arranged for one of its experts to inspect the piece in person. That's when Martin found out that this is a 4,500-year-old ancient Egyptian wooden mall of the kind that was used to build temples and tombs. Its true value is closer to 3,000 pounds than the three pounds he paid for it. That has to count as the yard sale find of a lifetime. It's impossible to identify the true origin point of chess. That's because the board game evolved from several older games, and it's impossible to say when those older games stopped being what they used to be and started to be chess. That being said, there's a very strong chance that this two-horned sandstone rook is the oldest chess piece in the world. It was found by Canadian archaeologist John Olson amid the ruins of an early Islamic settlement in Jordan in 1991. Olson believes that the ruins belong to an ancient trading post that was destroyed during the 7th century. The rook pieces you get with modern chess sets look like castles, but early chess sets almost always represented them as rectangles with horns on the top. They were patterned after horse-drawn chariots. Even the word rook is derived from the Persian rook, which means chariot. We know from Islamic texts that people played chess in Persia as early as the year 643, and this piece is from around the same time. If we're to find an older piece anywhere else, it will most likely come from India. That's where chess is commonly thought to have been invented around 200 years earlier than this piece was made. In some ways, the human race has changed a lot in the past 2,000 years. In other ways, it's barely changed at all. The way we care for our infants is largely unchanged. If you're going to feed a baby, you'll need a baby bottle to do it with. Here's an ancient Roman baby bottle from 2,000 years ago. It was found during routine archaeological excavations in Perion in the Turkish province of Kanakale in September 2013. Heartbreakingly, the artifact was found in the grave of an infant. While the vessel served the same purpose as a modern baby feeding bottle, it would have been considerably less comfortable in a baby's mouth. For a start, it's made from oven-dried earthenware. Based on their size, their light weight, and the size and shape of the attachment on their sides, historians think that the feeding bottles might also have functioned as pacifiers. That's actually a pretty neat idea. Why don't we make two-in-one devices like this anymore? That's an idea for any entrepreneurs in our audience. Remember to thank us if the idea takes off. Desertion is a big deal in the military. You can be imprisoned for life in the United Kingdom for desertion. In the United States of America, you can still technically be executed for it, although nobody's actually been executed since Eddie Slavic in 1945. Execution is actually a more severe penalty than you'd have endured if you tried to run away from your duties in the English Civil War during the 17th century, but you still wouldn't have liked the consequences. If you were expected to fight on the side of King Charles I for the Royalists, but quit or refused to do so, you'd find your hands clamped inside this heavy, spiky mitten. It's essentially an Iron Maiden for your palms, and contains the initials CR for Carolus Rex, Latin for King Charles. The outline of a crown is also clearly visible. To make matters worse, the mitten would be heated up before being applied to the hands. Branding deserters like this was outlawed in 1829, although it was still permissible to brand them through tattooing until 1879. Still, being branded is better than being killed. At the risk of sounding sensationalist, the Oxyrhynchus papyri is one of the most important collections of ancient literature in the world. 
The name of this collection of manuscripts comes from the ancient city of Oxyrhynchus, which is where they were found in 1896. The city is now known as El Banasa. Each of the documents is approximately 2,000 years old, and so they come from the very dawn of Christianity, a time when the religion was still trying to decide what was important, what wasn't important, and which books deserve to be in the Bible. That's why the Gospel of Thomas is included alongside the Gospel of Matthew. A prosaic section of the Bible called The Sayings of Jesus is also included, and also fell foul of the Bible's editors at some point in the distant past. Even though the authors of the manuscripts had accepted Christianity, they still believed in the power of magic spells. There are written spells in the papyri that are said to be able to make a woman fall in love with you or force a man to follow your orders. Even a few previously unknown poems by Sappho were found within the pages. So this is a collection that has something for everyone. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.